Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Gavin. Thank you very much for being here. I'm not much of a gamer. In fact, the last console my family had was a Nintendo, which my older brother got for Christmas in 1985. But when I got an email from one of my patrons suggesting that I take a look at this case, even I recognized the name Activision. Earlier this month, Activision Blizzard, which is the company behind games like Call of Duty, World of Warcraft, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, Candy Crush Saga, and so many more, was sued by a couple in Massachusetts who claim that the company is responsible for the death of their daughter, Carrie Moynihan. According to Carrie's death certificate, she ended her emotionally and psychologically painful life by herself back on April 27, 2017, in room 4214 of Disney's Grand Californian Hotel and Spa. But after reading her parents' lawsuit, as well as documents that the Orange County Coroner's Office sent me, and the lawsuits from the Department of Fair Employment and Housing and Equal Opportunity Employment Commission against Activision Blizzard, I suspect that Carrie did not, in fact, remove herself from the planet. Carrie Moynihan grew up in Wilmington, Massachusetts. She was the only child of Paul and Janet Moynihan. And from what I can tell from looking on the internet, she had lots of friends and a happy life. In 2008, she graduated cum laude from Northwestern University with a degree in business administration. The following year, she took her CPA examinations and passed on the first try, becoming a certified public accountant in both Massachusetts and California. That same year, 2009, she moved to Southern California, and according to her parents' lawsuit, she loved it. She loved going to the beach, eating out, shopping and exercising. She also loved the Boston Red Sox and she was a real animal lover. She had a cat named Mr. Leo. Carrie stayed in very close contact with her parents, emailing or calling them every single day and speaking with one of them almost every day. Even living on opposite ends of the country, they went on family vacations together and spent most holidays together. In 2011, Carrie took a job as a staff accountant at Activision Blizzard. She worked hard, was passionate about her job, and was well-liked. Then in 2016, she was promoted to the position of finance manager. And as far as Paul and Janet Moynihan knew, she loved her job. In the fall of that same year, Carrie began an intimate relationship with a man named Greg Restituto, who was a senior finance manager at Activision Blizzard and was also her direct supervisor. Now this was a move that wasn't wise for either of them because Greg was married at the time and had a newborn baby. But it was more than that. It was also against Activision Blizzard's stated company policy, according to her parents' lawsuit. But this is where things take a real sharp turn. Because according to their lawsuit, Paul and Janet thought that everything was going fine with Carrie at her job. But it turns out that things were anything but fine. Stated policies are one thing, but culture is quite another, and the culture at Activision Blizzard was far from friendly for female employees. According to lawsuits by the EOEC and the DFEH, female employees were frequently harassed by their male coworkers, and it wasn't just harassment. They were belittled and disparaged and discriminated against routinely. 
For example, male employees at Activision Blizzard would sometimes do cube crawls, where they would crawl through the cubicles in the office and sometimes grow the female employees, sometimes make unwanted comments or advances, or brag about their conquests. And in some cases, these were high-ranking executives. According to the DFEH's complaint, Activision Blizzard knew what was going on, did nothing to address the problems, and went to great lengths to cover them up, including shredding documents and victim complaints, and secretly settling suits that included repressive and punitive non-disclosure and non-disparagement agreements. In 2016, while at a company party, male co-workers passed around a photo of Carrie's private parts. And this was well known among the employees of Activision Blizzard because it was included in the DFEH's complaint. You can imagine how this would have made Carrie feel. Activision Blizzard scheduled a company retreat at Disney's Grand Californian Hotel and Spa in Anaheim, California from Monday, April 24th to Wednesday, April 26th, 2017. For some reason, and I don't know why, it was extended to Thursday the 27th. According to the autopsy report, Carrie was staying in room 4214. Greg Restituto was staying in room 4221 directly across the hall. Carrie had prepared a presentation for the retreat that was pushed to Thursday. On Wednesday evening, Carrie went to dinner with some of her coworkers. Then at about 11 p.m., she was with some coworkers in the Grand Californian's bar. At 1.24 a.m., she was seen speaking to Greg Restituto in the hotel lobby. She then returned to the bar. At 1.31 a.m., Greg Restituto sent Carrie a text that said, please don't do that, not tonight. Think about it and make your decision when your mind is clear. At 1.52 a.m., she left the bar and returned to her room. According to documents I have, Carrie died in her hotel room at about 2 a.m. She was suspended by a towel rack a bathrobe belt held her there by the neck. Paul and Janet Moynihan's lawsuit states that according to hotel keycard records, Greg Restituto left his room several times beginning at about 2.15 a.m. It's unknown to me how many times that door opened. It then goes on to state that Greg Restituto tried to contact Carrie at about 8.30 a.m. At 9 a.m., he reached out to hotel security and a hotel security guard found Carrie's body at 9.27 a.m. Documents in this case state that the cause of Carrie's death is ligature and the manner is but the doctor who examined Carrie didn't give any investigative reason for that determination. The lawsuit states that the Anaheim Police Department performed a perfunctory and incomplete investigation. Now, I tried requesting the police report in this case, but according to California law, I don't have standing, so I can't get it, so I don't know. But there are a few things about this case, about Carrie's death, that are suspicious to me, and I want to go over those. First, Greg Restituto went in and out of his hotel room several times starting at 2.15 a.m., or at least we know that his door was open several times beginning at 2.15 a.m., so we don't know if he was leaving his hotel room at 2.15, or if he was somewhere else and he came back to his hotel room at 2.15 a.m. But either way, at 8.30 a.m., after he had called Carrie and couldn't get a hold of her, he knew to reach out to hotel security for some reason. So that tells me one of two things. Number one is he already knew 
that Carrie Moynihan was dead in her hotel room, or he feared that Carrie Moynihan was dead in her hotel room. And there may be evidence that shows which one of those things he knew or feared, which one is true, but we will never know because Activision Blizzard blocked the Anaheim police from gaining access to his company computer, and they claimed that his company cell phone had been wiped. Next, Greg Restituto's text to Carrie that said, please don't do that, not tonight. Think about it and make your decision when your mind is clear. Doesn't sound to me like he's asking her not to do the thing that she allegedly ended up doing. Because if he were asking her not to do that, he wouldn't say, think about it and make your decision when your mind is clear. No, he would say something like, don't do that. Don't ever do that. Please don't even think about that. Next, the Anaheim Police Department did not process Carrie's hotel room as a crime scene. Now, according to the book titled Practical Homicide Investigations, which is widely accepted by law enforcement as one of the most authoritative books on the subject, it says all death investigations should be handled as homicide cases until the facts prove otherwise. And as Paul and Janet's lawsuit states, Quote, the APD did not dust Carrie's hotel room for prints or process the room as a crime scene, did not inventory all of the property found in the room, did not preserve a razor head and handle that had been found in the room, did not question Restituto as if he were a suspect, did not search or seek consent to search Restituto's personal cell phone, did not question Restituto about his text message to Carrie preceding her death, did not make an effort to determine a motive for Carrie's purported suicide and did not seek any warrants. The Anaheim police closed the case on May 23rd, 2017. Carrie didn't leave behind a note. She didn't use her phone or computer to search for methods to do what police said she did. She didn't text anything about it, nothing suggested or mentioned it. She didn't make arrangements for her cat. And at the time of her death, she had already bought tickets to go to a music festival and to fly back to Boston to visit her family and to be the maid of honor in her friend's wedding. Lastly, there was an effort to cover up the circumstances of Carrie's death by Greg Restituto. He asked, hotel personnel to return a key card to his room that he had left in Carrie's room. He uh, went to her apartment and cleaned it and removed items from it. He hid the nature of his relationship to Carrie Moynihan from police. It wasn't until the second interview that he admitted that the two were having an affair. Paul and Janet Moynihan were not aware of any of the problems that Carrie was facing at work. In fact, the first time they became aware of the atmosphere at Activision Blizzard was in July of 2021, when Paul's brother showed them an article about the lawsuit the DFEH was bringing against the company. In the lawsuit, it made specific, albeit unnamed, references to Carrie. In their lawsuit, they list three causes of action and are asking for a total of $3 million in damages, as well as legal fees and punitive damages. In January of 2022, Microsoft announced its acquisition of Activision Blizzard for $68.7 billion. The deal still needs to go through a whole bunch of steps, including regulatory review. It may take years for the deal to become finalized, and I doubt that the Moynihan's lawsuit is going to get in the way of that. In fact, when I looked it up, uh, there are over 80 federal lawsuits against Activision Blizzard at this time. In the meantime, I'm curious what you think. Did Carrie Moynihan remove herself from this earth the way police said she did? 
or did something more sinister state sinister take place? Um, I think Greg Restituto had a lot to lose if word of his affair with Carrie got back to his wife and he was acting very weird according to the documents that I read. But I don't know, and I would love to hear your opinion on that, so please leave that in the comments below. I want to give a shout out to Alexander, one of my patrons, for suggesting this case to me. It is an interesting case, one that I will continue to follow, and I really appreciate uh, my patrons for their financial support and for alerting me to cases that we should be talking about. So thank you, Alexander, for doing that. If you want to support my channel, one way to do it is by watching these videos all the way to the end and uh, by subscribing if you like the channel and liking it if you like the content and giving me a thumbs down if you don't. I want to know what kind of content you guys want, so please, please feel free to do the thumbs down if you don't like it. Um, but if you want to give financial support to my work, you can do so by joining my squad of citizen detectives over on Patreon. I will leave a link in the description below. And with that, I will bid you adieu. And I hope to see you next time. Take care. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked what you saw, please subscribe to my channel. And if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below.